Welcome viewers, this is Tex of the Black Pants Legion, and this is an interview. I've spoken with admins, host developers, and the other creatives behind Space Station 13 before, and they are notoriously antisocial types who generally don't like to talk with or at people for prolonged periods of time, as they are judge, jury, and executioner on a server, and can't be seen demonstrating favoritism at least in theory. Anyways, here's how this works. I'm putting out an open call to any and all Space Station 13 admins on any public listed servers. This call is here, so answer it. If you are interested in answering or participating in an interview about Space Station 13, its history, and your server, please respond. See the description below for an email contact. I'll try to get to you and we can set something up. That being said, this is an interview with a Space Station 13 admin. The questions are largely freeform, and the discussion does not reflect exactly the policy of the server, unless otherwise by the person I'm interviewing. The reason I say this is I want to encourage an admin to be frank, honest, and open about their experience without worrying that they're shitting on their server, or to prevent them from being yelled at for representing the server community in a bad way. This is a point of view and not, I repeat, not an absolute definition of doctrine on said server. That being said, I welcome our interviewee. Please, internet person, tell me your name you wish to go by, your server, and your admin rank. Uh, hi, my name is Nicknack Flack, or more often just Nicknack. I'm a game admin at TG Station. So... Tell us from your perspective, because I know you've been a admin on TG for a very long time. You predate the current f creation of the forums, if memory serves. Yep, I was around since... Actually, I started way... So, we had three forums, I think. Yeah. We had Aero forums, MSO forums, and the forums before that, which I think were hosted by TLE. And so, I basically joined the community as those forums were dying. I see. So, what have you seen on TG history over the years? Any interesting stories? Uh, quite, quite a lot. Most of them, uh, probably not the best. <laughs> like, well. They aren't good, they aren't good stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Space Station 13. I mean, yeah. And most of them involve, surprisingly, nothing to do with the game. Oh, it always mean... involves drama outside of the game, yeah. I think that's kind of bread and butter of Space Station 13. I think that drama is inescapable to this community. I mean, it's definitely what keeps some people around. It's definitely what's kept me around. Just a little bit of madness. Uh, let's see. Well, we always have, like, the big drama bombs. Like, we had... Arrow Ridge's notable uh, purge of shit was always a big one where he just banned a bunch of people he didn't like off of his forums and it kind of sparked everybody to jump ship. I felt like that one was was a bigger deal at the time, but looking back, it's like, eh, things could have been a lot worse. Well, it, especially considering the nature of drama as we move into the modern age or modern era of hate on the internet. There's uh, some juicy gossip around every corner, seemingly. And it's made to be this public celebration of shame, chaos, and fear. Whenever it's drama related to like someone else being mad at someone else of the community, since I've seen like so much worse stuff over the years, it like it lessens that by a lot. So like that's like nothing compared to like suicide scandals or like people yeah. committing actual crimes like DDoS and all that stuff. Yeah. So this is just it's jaded you to it in a sense. I don't know if it's it's not. I don't want to say jaded because people put that in such a bad light. It's just that it's just like Space Station Thirteen drama versus like actual drama that involves like someone's life or is like a crime or you know pe people being dicks on the internet feels like less of a big deal after yeah. you see it all the time and like you see that it's actually just not that bad mm, yeah i agree so why should a player play on your station other than any other choice they have what makes it unique in your viewpoint uh, I think I think someone else touched on this 
And this is also potentially a bad thing since the structure of our coding could be kind of bad, but I think we are the most active uh, on the coding side. Mm -hmm. uh, Hippie, Yog, a bunch of other places, literally like their entire repository is just a bot remaking PRs on their repo after they've been made on TG. So I think first and foremost, it's like we have good population and we have the dankest, newest features from the hippest coders. The hippest coders. Not all of them, but you know. <laughs> so what is the most common thing a new player asks when they hit TG, since you are a game admin? <sighs> hmm. I'm trying to think. Cries for help? Uh, we get a lot of, boink, where's my office? Or where's my workplace? Some pretty small ones. God, I can't even remember. We get so many questions. Like 99.999% of adminning is just answering people's questions about the game. Wow. It's, it's, it's everything. It's so hard for me to pin that down to one thing. I can't even think right now. So, why are you an admin on the server? What made you initially volunteer your time? And what other than the juicy nonsense drama has kept you around? So, when I first became an admin, I was, I started as a forum mod, a bad forum mod for Aerogis forums, and it used to upset me that everybody would shitpost all the time, because back then we didn't have a designated shitpost in place, people just like, took craps wherever. Yeah. And that gave me like this little legacy rank called admin observer, which was basically useless, but I could see admin PMs, I could respond to admin PMs. So I asked an admin bus at the time if I was allowed to respond to game questions, you know, 99.9% .9 of what admins get, because they're like, that's not banning, that's not anything, it's just me answering questions about the game to players that don't know since I've wasted my life on it, whatever. Yeah. And then people saw that I did that anyway, and they're like, basically just doing an admin work regardless. So then SOS just made me a trialman. And then what mostly kept me around was actually the GM part of it. Like, originally, I was like, oh, I'm already answering questions. I kind of got interested in the banning aspect of side and all of the database side, like the technology side of admining with uh, connections and watching players and stuff like that. But what ultimately kept me around was the fact that I got to be like a game master and like make events and do stuff. Like when I first became a trialman, I almost ran an event daily, just whatever I could think of. And I just got a blast out of it I still do I still running events on the server or like spawning little things that just add something unique to the round it's just my bread and butter so what would you say is the hardest part of being an admin on your server uh, well I think like maybe getting shit if you get it but like I don't know I don't think banning people is all that hard because it's usually pretty clear. I I never understood people who had a hard time making judgment calls, personally. Running events isn't that difficult. That's the fun part. I would like to say it's literally, if you manage to spark some drama, it can be the most annoying, stressful thing in the world. And it brings you, it's like such a damper on your internet life. But it's also avoidable. So, I don't know. What would you say is the greatest single challenge you've faced as an admin? Or recurring great challenge? Mm, I'd like to say the biggest challenge would be if you ever butt heads with other admins or players on your view of the game, basically. Like, everybody is going to have a different view on the game. And ultimately, headmans are the ones that get to decide the direction and policy well, coders have kind of an input as well because, you know, how fast the game or how, I can't speak, how fast the game is paced is, has a lot to do with how the code works. But there is quite a lot of disagreement sometimes on 
what should be rules, what should be false, should we pay for this, blah blah blah, should this be added to the game, stuff like that. I think that can be a challenge, especially if, especially if you have a different viewpoint from a majority of other people. You're going to be kind of in the minority and face a lot of pushback from how you want to run the game. So, what do you think is the greatest single challenge that faces Space Station 13 today, at least from the perspective of TG? Mm, I'd like to say maybe pop oh boy, come on, English, work with me. Population and the fact that it's on Beyond itself. Like, people have been talking about remakes for years because Beyond just gets more bugs and has limitations. And, like, a lot of times people say that Space Station 13 is the only thing keeping Beyond alive. And I don't think we've ever had, like, terrible population. And I'm also not an expert on population. I haven't really looked into the stats too much. But I always feel like we've been on the down low. And I feel like it's been slowly tapering off or people have been going other places. Like, we used to hit upwards of 100 people sometimes. I remember. So, I definitely think population is the biggest struggles PlayStation 13 is going to have, period. So, here's a good one. How do you combat special snowflakes that do occasionally invade your server? I actually listened to this, because uh, I listened to the entire Headman interview you did. Oh, dear. And so, I actually don't deal with this as much as other admins do, apparently. I know the cat girls are the most notable ones. On TG, yes, yeah, and like, I don't even know, like, I feel like they used to be a bigger problem, like, we had an old headman who became so noticeable for having, like, being a red-haired cat girl who basically only hung out with a blue-haired cat girl in medbay every round, and... Like, people would make fun of them, blah, blah, blah. I don't, like, some people would say they would get, like, extra shit, but I didn't really even notice that either. It was more like people just gave them enough shit that they got disinterested. Hmm. I feel like I feel like that's always going to happen, because, like, being a special snowflake, basically, you're just a special snowflake until you can't stand it anymore. And whether that's TG harassing you in general, <laughs> like all the players, or maybe stepping over the line in the administration side who knows i feel like it just it's a self-fixing problem eventually you can only snowflake for so long what is your opinion on people who play on your server and record and those who would attempt to stream uh this has been talked about to death yes. i don't really think it's a huge problem because watching space station 13 can be inherently boring i have never seen a successful streamer really stream Space Station 13. It's more like just someone wants to try it out and see how it is. And most of the time, it's just not a great game for streaming. Like I said, it's kind of boring to watch, and it just kind of like doesn't work with how the game is supposed to work. It, we've talked about like people putting on big delays. So, I don't know. In theory, that could work, because nobody cares about like a minute and a half later into the game, but you can still get information out of it. So it's like, eh, shouldn't be a big deal, but just it's just not the game for it. So what do you think about the problems? And I, I know this has been brought up on TG. I brought this up with the headmans. There is the lingering issue of, like, the meta club and metacom and meta friends. What is your take on all that? Metacoms is the outlier. It's easily just destroys how the game's supposed to work. Punishable, not something that like fits into the other categories. Meta clubs and meta friends, those are the ones that like sit together but apart from meta comming. And hmm, we've had some pretty some pretty cancerous meta clubs before. I think they can get pretty bad, but at the same time like making friends and having a static name like it's kind of just what happens over the rounds especially on low pop servers people just create friends and it's not a bad thing it's what pe keeps people around that's what keeps people engaged with the community but basically it's like everything has a line you know oh yeah i mean i've been using the same name in space station 13 for recording purposes for a very long time but i also have another 
CD key that I use for when I'm scouting things out. But what I've seen with certain certain people is if they have a static character, like, you know, on TG, I can point out and go, oh, that's Edward Sloan. If he's the head of security, you're fucked if you're a traitor. He's just going to judge dread you through the wall and you die. Um, you can kind of recognize some of these same names and how people play and their little personalities. And it's like we're walking into a job and knowing other people who work there. And they have their own personalities and everything's predictable. And you can say, you know, hi, George, hi, Frank, and go about your day. But on the other end, I, I see a lot of danger with metacoms, um, especially in, in so far as small groups that always work together and are suspiciously well-coordinated. Mm, well, like, from dealing with metacomers for so long... It's just, eventually it becomes obvious. Like, you can only hide it so well for so long. Eventually, some admin will get attention and they'll either just straight up PM you and make the claim and you can either claim otherwise or not claim otherwise. And so either you know admins are now watching you in which they'll probably either step off or continue doing it. And if they continue doing it, like I said, it's usually pretty obvious an admin will either note it hidden or actually just question them straight out. If they continue doing it, eventually it's just like they slip up or something. You have no idea how many times we've seen people metacom and we've PM'd them and they'll be like, oh, no, we're not metacoming or something like that. And so it's like, OK, well, you know, admins like think you're doing this. And if like they actually end up are doing that, they just they don't stop. They just keep doing it as if nobody ever noticed. Yeah, and then they, they do something blatant, and boom, it's done. So what do you think makes a good admin good? Mm, I think the very basis is to follow the procedures we have, actually talk to people like in a respectful, unbiased manner as much as you can be. Uh, basically, you got to do the basis admin work. Events are kind of like an added fluff that can make a someone better, or if they run bad events, make someone worse. But you just got to do like the usual stuff, like pull logs when you need to pull logs, know how to investigate things, what's logged where, piece things together, and then in the end, make a judgment call that's fair, and more often than not, that's like actually not banning a bunch of people. So we try to warn people, or if they are a dick, actually ban them but for however long amount of time you got to be like you said judge jury and executioner and i think judge is one of the more important parts executioner is more or less just doing the ban if it comes down to it if necessary but just part of the job yep so on the nature of balance between shit security and the gray tide something that tg i think has had uh as part of its uh, process for a very long time. What is your opinion on how best to maintain that balance? I always think that Grey Tide is going to be worse than Shitcurity. Just in my personal opinion, I see a lot more Grey Tide than I do Shitcurity. If I see Shitcurity, it's usually, and this is kind of a kind of a joke in its own way, it's usually like specific people over many rounds. Whereas Grey Tide is just like, Anybody and anyone can be a little shitter every once in a while, but security is like it's for some reason It's usually distinct people who just can't seem to get their security boner down for some reason. I I, I understand some people well judge dread So yeah, Edward Sloan yeah. what a shitter <laughs> he, he is an admin isn't he? Unfortunately. Oh damn throwing shade I have no problem with beasting all right. So, in in your opinion, what is the best AI law set, and why? Uh, I'm trying to think. I've seen so many of the of the default ones over the years, like Asimov, Antimov, uh, blah, British Mob, American Mob, blah, Robocop, Paladin. I can't even. I don't even want to say any of the one of the defaults ones, like. There's been some notable ones that people have created, like custom, but I can't even remember most of them. 
So it's difficult to say. If I had to pick from the default ones, uh, hmm. between Robocop and Paladin, I usually don't even see that much difference except that the AI player turns from like anti-human harm observer to like observer security. So they just kind of like give more of a security edge. I guess I'd say Paladin, but in the case of, oh, here, okay, I figured it out. It's Paladin slash Tyrant, because I've seen it kind of in both flavors, where I've seen like traders take over the station, and so the Paladin uh, kind of aligns with them, because I think it has the law where it's like, you respect authority or something like that. I know Tyrant is for sure, so Tyrant, if basically, it's power is absolute and you like respect the power the most so when a syndicate takes over the station the ai ends up aligning with the syndicate and becomes evil and starts like just enforcing the station as if they were a syndicate ai like not necessarily like dicking over civilians or other jobs but like just ha adding like an evil flair or like a dickish flair like slamming doors on people just for fun stuff like that that's I think I've seen that a few times, and that's definitely the best. What is the best trader you have ever seen as an admin? Uh, and why? I'd like to think... I don't want to say Jonathan Rigel, but I do want to say Jonathan Rigel. It was back when Bag of Holdings actually made Singulos, and it was back before uh, they instantly give people because people kept abusing this. But he basically just popped out like eight or nine of those suckers on the station. And it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Just watching Singulos in every corner of the station converge everywhere. And a couple of them met up and exploded, you know, because that's what they do. And then some of them would get huge. And then the tiny ones would run into the big one, explode, and make it smaller again. Basically, I just enjoyed seeing like six Singulos at once so much that I was like, yep, nothing can top this. So your life is complete now. I mean, how often are you going to be able to get six singulars on the station? If you, if you admin it, you'd be like, uh-uh, son, deadman. But a player does it with Bag of Holdings. <laughs> Perfectly okay. Or a cargo petting zoo. Ooh, boy, can't can't pass up that. No, it's just, I, I did that once on TG. I, I had the singular petting zoo and cargo. And surprisingly, I did not get admin boinked at, at all. Um, unfortunately, someone wanted to get in there and pet them, and they got loose. Of course, that's, that's always happens. <laughs> it's it just, you know, man, it, you can plot for any chaos you want, but man will destroy you in the end. They're just so cuddly. I know, I know. You just gotta get in there, and you're doomed. So, what is the worst traitor you've ever seen? Like, someone who is so fucking bad that you just couldn't believe it? Uh, I think a notable one was the stereotypical E-Sword guy. He was oh, going to you mean Oni. <laughs> <laughs> you, you saw that video, right? Nope. Oh, God. He 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 did a video, and he, he did the double E-Sword, like Murder Bone Traitor, and he got killed by... Uh, T.G. Denizen's just throwing fistfuls of garbage and broken glass at him, and then he died. See, that's not that bad, because at least he's getting killed, right? Yeah. One guy I'm talking about went to the brig, because he, he wanted to do uh, slips, because slips are pretty OP, and used to be even worse than they are now. They yeah. actually got nerfed. So he went to go slips, and he slipped on his own soap, dropped his e-sword, then beepski stunned him, then the warden walked up and just cut him into pieces. Wow. You'd be surprised. Beefski just takes down so many traitors. And this guy slipped on his soap, but Beefski kept him down. Beefski held him down while the warden stabbed him. That's beautiful. So what is the best and or favorite round of Space Station 13 you've witnessed so far and why? Hmm. I... I'm trying to comb over like 2,000 plus rounds right now. Give me some time. Uh, Processing. I'm trying to think. 
some of the like notable event rounds are always pretty good, but I don't want to include those because those feel like outside the scope of a regular round. Like, so, yeah, I mean, I, I understand if something was a really cool plan thing, but in essence, it's it's a stage play. The, yeah. the characters have roles to play, but I mean, just of things that have spontaneously happened. I got it. I got it. So this was back on Artyom, the code base split server, where server two was a different code base for just a little while. And we had a decent population, 30, 40 people-ish. So we had a decent amount. And they decided to run a talent show in the bar. Oh, dear. And so we had a couple people. We had someone like try to juggle blades and that wasn't that interesting because he's just like doing the emotes we had firefighter fred that was pretty great where he was like a little clown in the firefighting get up and he had a flamethrower and he like lit plasma on the stage and then he put it down and gave fire safety tips and that was all cute and adorable we had some other stuff that i didn't know and it basically ended when the test the ball back when uh we just added that the test the ball escaped and decided it wanted to win the talent competition itself and shocked the shit out of everybody there and everybody died that's amazing so so yeah, people are doing a talent them. show the thing teleports in the middle of the room and everyone dies yeah test the ball won the talent competition first place amazing so what is the best sort of player for your station and community uh someone who will like take the time to type out and talk and interact with other players but at the same time when shit hits the fan he's not gonna be like walking and pretends he doesn't know what to do like tg has that action aspect but it's also shitty when like nothing's going on and like you talk to someone and it's just like the wordless dude who goes around and just does his own thing, like grabs all the loot for maintenance and just anti-ag hunts. Like nobody likes that guy. So you need so you need a slight more push towards the role play oriented side. Not a whole lot. Basically just enough to interact with people and not be a like walking NPC. Like, if we wanted NPCs, we could just spawn the ones we have. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you have a point there. So, what is your favorite event? That I've ran, that I've seen other admins run? What? Period. Uh, hmm. Uh, it'd probably be one that I ran. I don't even know. Like... There's so many events that don't turn out super good. Yeah. That it's hard for me to say that they're, like, the best. Like, the ball was great. But at the same time, I also thought the ball had a lot of shortcomings. People used up all the stuff. And as far as, like, engagement, it wasn't that great. We had the big battle royales we used to do. And those were pretty fun. But there's also the problem of, like, we had certain people doing certain events at certain times so not everybody gets to participate all at once uh some of mine have been ranging from pretty good to pretty mediocre i used to run it i used to i first mapped a big ice block basically and then i used to ram it into the station because i made it a shuttle and then it slowly have space leaking in oh no i actually i figured it out again it was the station was flying way toward, or basically flying into the sun. So the players on the station had to design like a cool bunker to survive in as the station basically flew into the sun. So they built this little bunker with reinforced walls. They set up freezers in it. And they even dragged the fucking freezer from the kitchen, even though it doesn't do anything, but what I mean. They dragged the freezer from the kitchen, and then they all huddled into it while me, and I think it was a Wegno, actually. Or maybe it was Nerdy. I can't remember, but we changed the space icon to fire, and we spawned little explosion effects around the bunker, and we, like, increased the air temperature somehow to 
pretty high degrees and because they actually did cool their bunker it actually kept them alive and then we played fire noises and there weren't that many players on at the time so it wasn't a huge event but just the fact that like there was so much to it and they actually the event actually worked where they actually had to be in the bunker or they'd actually be burned to a crisp was kind of interesting that is interesting um i i mean i i would like to see more kind of stuff like that i mean I know that some of the events are a roll of the dice, but as a player, I can say they, they do add a lot to it if they're well thought out. Yeah, they're not easy to run sometimes. you got to figure out how to do stuff. Sometimes stuff breaks or doesn't work. Uh, sometimes this is a fair problem that happens if you've got like specific, specific stuff planned out. You don't know how players are going to react. So sometimes you'll have to change something on the fly or like forcefully stop a player from doing something and that might make that player upset. It's not an easy task. Yeah, I remember there was, um, well, one of you guys challenged me one time to sell the station. Like that, just something very simple like that actually can be very, very funny. But, I call, yeah. I call those gimmicks. Yeah. And... Something something like that that can be funny, but also if it comes through and it says, Nano Treason charges you to sell the station, then whoever is in charge of quartermastery or the captaincy or whatever has to go, okay, we got to get top value for all this shit. Okay, what do we take apart first? And in the meantime, you have traitors, and the traitors change from trying to murder everyone to stop the sale of the station. So they're trying to drive the value down, and this kind of empowers players, I think, in a certain way, to each play an interesting role that they've all been trader before, they've all been QM before, they've all been captain before, but under these slightly changed circumstances, it's like a mutator for a game. Yeah, yeah. I, t I kind of touched on this at the very beginning of this interview, where you, as an admin, you should, or try to do something strange in every single round, so that every single round that you are a part of, it's unique. And whether that be like spawning some like minor mobs in some place and then doing some sort of CENTCOM announcement or like changing something's color or like moving something, really small things basically that just makes the round unique. Like I mentioned gimmicks and that's what gimmicks does. I don't, I like to call them gimmicks because it's like sort of the same thing a player does where an admin just does this kind of like weird quirky thing that doesn't really affect the round at all or even track what the antags are doing but add something like a little bit of a flavor like if you want to go into gimmicks i have like maybe four or five that i used to do all the time so what is your opinion on nations rounds can be fun can be boring depends on who's running it depends on the players uh Sometimes rounds just end up turning into nations, even if it's not a nation's round. Like, that's how, I guess, gun cargo became became a thing. Gun cargo used to, like, buy guns, buy emitters, order whatever they wanted. It'd be like, all right, we're separate. I yeah. think that's actually kind of where nations got its roots. Yeah, they, it, it kind of started with that whole idea of, um... <laughs> well, it's having played cargo both robustly and unrobustly. I can say that there are certain gimmicks to each department that can be funny, but if overused, also will kill everything. I mean, I think that's the case with everything. Like, all, every, almost everything you mention, it's like, what about this? What about this? What about this? And it's like, well, it depends. Yeah. It can be great. It can be horrible. We've had QMs who used to do gun cargo every round, so much so that it became like a policy thread. Or we have it every once in a while where like security comes down and raids gun cargo and this big shootout and even though a bunch of people die, everybody thought it was great because it was like it felt like an actual like police raid, yeah. Yeah, it was stuff like that. Which is really funny in the end. I mean it but every round is terrible. Um especially um and, and this is just one thing that I noticed was if you log in as QM after someone's been running gun cargo for uh -oh. eight rounds in a row, and then they leave, 
and then you play QM and you play it straight, security comes right to you right away and blows the door off the hinges and starts fucking everything up. And you're like, why have you done this? I'm an honest businessman and they don't believe you. <laughs> why are you beating me, officer? Yeah, it just, it's it's one of those, it and it does spill over, um, which is really funny because... I I have inherited that situation where I have people who are like, all right, cargo's been funky all day, and uh, people come in there trying to kill people, and it's it's amazing and terrible. Damn security. Damn security, but I hate the tide more. So what is your favorite role to play, least favorite role, and why? Least favorite role would probably be janitor. Why? As much as, as, much as I've tried to love janitor, and like try to be like the janitor that just cleans and doesn't give a fuck. Just, yeah, just never works. Like you, no matter how much you clean, stage is just gonna get absolutely disgusting, covered in blood. And like I don't even know why people play janitor. It's an uphill battle where you're always going to lose. I I just never found janitor, at least mechanics wise, fun. So definitely janitor, least favorite. As far as favorite, I'd probably put it. And people are gonna think I'm crazy, but I probably put it at medical doctor slash geneticist i kind of play them interchangeably even if like even if i'm a medical doctor i'll do genetics at some point through the round or from genetics i'll act as a medical doctor after i finish stuff like that i like being in control of who lives and dies i like being able to like help people like if i see i've done this so many times i see a trader fucking up a bunch of people so many people in that scenario would be like, oh, I'm going to be the hero. I'm going to take down the traitor. I'm just like, nope, run in, grab someone's body, book it out of there. So you're you're there to uphold the Hippocratic Oath and chew bubble gum. Yep, basically. And like, there's also a lot of downtime to Medical Bay. So uh, back when I played a bunch of Server 2, I would do all that stuff. I would uh, pimp out Medical Bay a lot. I love building. I used to play atmospheric and engineer quite a bit. So even to this day, as a medical doctor, I'll like pimp out med bay and like change the floors and basically make it all nice and pretty. And you also get a lot of social interaction there too. Either be coworkers or sitting at the desk watching people. Like med bay is a high traffic area because you know space station thirteen people die a lot. Yeah. So what do you think is the most powerful department on space station thirteen? Uh. I definitely have to say science. It always has been. It might always will be. Uh, you got like xenobiology, which has only been buffed. You can get tons of things from slimes. Robotics is pretty great. You get giant mechs that are pretty powerful. Toxins gives you access to gas and bombs and then R&D. And while it's changed pretty recently, you can still print guns, upgrade machines. Basically, you can build any other uh, machinery uh, that any other department has just in your department from R&D. It's very overpowered. I think it's the most overpowered department in the game. You can pretty much do anything in science. As an admin, how often do you press the buttons? Personally, I tend to press them a little bit less. And if I do press them, I kind of designate a round for it. I don't like to just hijack a round, especially if I come in late into the round. Yeah, they don't like to hijack it. Um, I used to get kind of annoyed back when I was a player way back when if I was playing and the round was going normally and then suddenly like a shit ton of buttons were pressed and shit just gets crazy randomly and wildly. So not as often as other admins, I think. All right. Now, why do you think... Or what do you think, I should say, is the best part of being an admin on TG Station? What is the most rewarding part of the job? I'd say the most rewarding part is basically if you run a good event or you handle a situation nicely and like everybody, uh, both parties come away feeling good about the interaction. And it basically leaves a good taste in the player's mouth either be a good event or like i said good interaction and someone says something about it they're like damn wow that was a good event i wish more rounds were like that or hey wow admin you're right this situation really wasn't as bad as i thought we really can keep it in character i don't think we need to get bands involved or you're definitely right this was an anti or something like that basically 
when you diffuse the situation and players are happy and then they mention it they express their happiness i think it's like very rewarding leaves you with nice warm fuzzy feelings and yeah it's nice to have that good feeling of having contributed i agree such a break from people shitting down your throat. Well, yeah, I was going to say, with people like trying to drive nails into your brain, and then you're like, oh, well, hey, I made someone's day, and oh, here comes another admin to help. So what is the very best map that TG has, and why? Uh, I think it's like, I'd like to say Delta is the best map because it has the most to it. Oh, but yeah. I, can I can understand why we don't use it as much i think it was taken out of rotation it is fucking massive and it's glorious you know, we don't always have the population that's great for it so i know i've always been a preference towards meta station over box or puppy or any of those other things but delta definitely is the most beautiful station has the most to it i think is the most well designed has the most extra things like bedrooms for head offices and like way more things in maintenance and maintenance hideouts. Oh There's yeah. Just a lot more to it and it's a very cool map. I think so. In your opinion, what is the very best antagonist role and why? So for me personally, and I know tons of people disagree, especially since like wizard and ninja and aliens are a lot less common, but I've always liked changeling the most because with all the healing powers and anti-stuns it really gives me the freedom to do whatever i want i feel like a miniature god walking around being unkillable and being able to like buy powers for spacesuit buy powers to survive buy powers to like kill people faster you get like i said you get it a lot more than alien and ninja those are a little bit more rare so while other people might think those are more fun just because i get changeling more often and i feel like i can do a lot more with changeling in a regular round it's definitely my preferred antag so if you could say something to a player that has walked onto your server for the first time ever what would it be uh, I'd say you're probably going to invest a lot of hours if you give Space Station 13 a chance. Be prepared to die, is what you're <laughs> saying. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So, one of the most contentious questions we have, one of the serious big boy contentious questions we have is the... Failures and remakes in Space Station 13. There have been um, many problems, like um, with SS3D, uh, Beep disappeared, uh, SS14 that's gone through many people, um, Ion fell off the tracks, now there's Station Years, um, there's a Dwarf, uh, what was it, Space Base DF9 by Double Fine, um, big studios, small studios, indie studios, fan attempts. Why do you think it all goes to shit? And do you think it's avoidable for it to go to shit? I, I think two reasons, mostly. The first being that they just don't have enough people actually invested in their project. They never have enough people who are interested enough and suicidal enough to take on the huge amount of workload that requires to remake Space Station 13 and something else. And on top of that, while Beyond, I think, has been a little bit on the down low, it's not dead. And we still have servers getting upwards of 100 people. TG Station isn't the most populated it used to be, but we still have a pretty decent pop, especially on Bagel. Servers are still active, alive. Communities are still up and running and kicking. So maybe if Beyond dies and people love the game and they want to bring it back, it'd get more traction, but simply the fact that not enough people are interested in trying to remake something that isn't even quite dead yet. I understand. Another thing I think that kind of haunts the makeup of this community is that no matter how fast they move and what direction they pull, they can't outrun the drama and the horseshit. Can't outrun a radio. Can't outrun a radio. Why do you think that much like Beepski, drama is a persistent part of this station that seems out to destroy it? 
I don't even know if it's destroy it. It fuels it in a way. People actually like the drama, even as long as you're not, you know, too much of a part of it. It's interesting. It's dramatic, as you say, drama. Yeah. It. It's something new that detracts from the game. That's more about like the people in the community itself. So in a way, there's almost like a desire for it. Yes. And inevitably, people are just stupid if we're gonna do stupid shit, and it's gonna cause drama. And so it's not that I think like anybody's out to destroy TG Station or is out to destroy Space Station 13 in general. I think it's just like we're humans and we do dumb shit. And the internet is full of weird people. Interesting. So, another deep and contentious question. Uh, clown or mime? Uh, I, I don't really like either too much, but I'd have to go with clown because I just can't stand not talking. I, I find playing mime really, really hard. And while you can technically talk as mime, it's basically taboo. And, like, why would you play mime? If you talk as mime, you're a bad mime. So I'd definitely have to pick clown. But I'd pick like a costume or something. Just get me out of these clown clothing, basically. So you do like lawyer clown or captain clown or something. Gotta have gotta have a clown gimmick. No, it's stereotypical clowns. Like you can do it, but everybody does it, and everybody just plays clown in any which way or another. It's almost like assistant, but with a silly, shitty flavor on it. Okay. Okay. As we've reached the end of the interview, do you have anything you want to communicate to the Greater Space Station 13 community? Shout outs, apocalyptic warnings, requests, or so on. The time is yours. I would say for anybody playing out there, I think the game is amazing. It's one of the games that's kept me around for as long as I can remember. I've played this game for so many years. There's so much to Space Station 13. Even if you don't want to play, you can start developing. You can sprite, you can code, you can make sounds, you can write music, you can do so much for this community, you can do so much for the game, you can get involved in, admi in administration if you're not a shitter. Basically, Space Station 13 has a lot for you if you want to take the time and get invested into it. It's a great game. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's rock the arm.